all right guys you welcome again to my channel i am joshua the designer and in this video i'll be showing to you how to detail a pad foundation all right what you can see right on my screen here is um, a foundation layout for a pad footing all right a pad foundation um, layout so you can see um, the footings dimension of different kind of sizes you know we have that's why we have base type one base type two and base type three and all of the all of the sizes and then we have such like this in section and then in plan right before you can get to having all of these things it is expected that you might have you, you should have carried out your designs and you have the respective sizes that are sufficient enough to support your structure and then you have the required reinforcement that should be in all of these bases all right so today's um lecture is going to show to you how you can rightfully detail a foundation base a column base just like this all right so you pay attention already you know how we do it from the standard method of detailing and that's where we're going to be picking all our references from so that we can get better and we can get it right all right so if we want to take an example um in this scenario where we have already placed um layouts i mean foundation base sizes on this layout so we want to just pick one of those um, column bases and create a, um, a detailing for that particular section so taking this for example base type one which is 1.2 by 1.2 meter in in size all right so we want to take this as a typical example to show ourselves how to detail a column base all right so it is expected that as you can see where i brought it out there is a column right at the middle so that should be well represented there to show that a column is right rightly sitting on top of the base all right so let's get to the standard method of detailing and from there we'll, we'll bring out everything that has to do with our drawing okay so this is the standard method of de detailing i've been using all the while and if you have not been able to lay your hands on this material you want to do want to look through my past videos as i dropped the um, the link to that in one of those videos you can do that and you find that handy all right so in the detailing of a part footing do you know that there are two method we can use in achieving this however the two methods are primarily um one just the difference is being that when you have to do um, a very large project where we have similar bases you may want to classify or categorize these bases into one and that is where we need to provide produce um tables and you know different kind of informations to show our categories and to show the number of bases that are in the same class all right so and that's that's the tabular method all right but primarily what we do use is the traditional method all right so like you can see traditional method is normally used when the project is small or where there is a little repetition individual part footings are, are detailed usually in the form of a plan and section in form of a plan and section grid lines are shown on each details the details will give reinforcement information in the base in the start column if there is one starter bars where the foundation is supporting an rc column or holding down boards in the case of steel all right so let's just get into the business and um, i'll show you how you're going to do it so this exactly is going to lead us in through um what we're going to do this seems to be the simplest um element you could you can detail straight forward you know because you just have to keep your covers and then have the reinforcement information and that will be all all right so let's get to work you see that this is the plan on the left where my cursor is hovering over and then we have the section there and then also the section of the column all right so getting back to our drawing this is the plan we have reinforcement um that has been designed for 
uh, earlier from our design processes all right so which results to be y16 at 250 on both sides all right y15 y16 at 250 on both sides that is x direction and y direction is what i mean all right so <clears throat> knowing that would make our work so straightforward like i've said i just want to keep the details a little bit smaller and um nicer all right to look so you may want to do that too if that suits you okay so getting that into our, our project already and i want to take out this i'll take out the hatch okay great knowing that we have our y16 at 250 center the center as the reinforcement that is required on both sides so why not proceed from there so this is what we're going to do now we are just going to put um that on this plan then from there we'll produce um a section if you may call it that way or an elevation but it is properly called a section okay so we know on this axis there ought to be a reinforcement that would span from the top down to this place however it's not supposed to lean on the face of the concrete and that is why we have the concrete cover so for a foundation um there are there are several conditions as i've shown earlier in one of my videos that there are several conditions that um points out what cover is necessary or required okay so for the foundation usually we use a cover of 50 mm then you can even go above 50 mm you know depending on the elements and um, what exposure condition you see that now so but for this case we want to stay at 50 um and we'll move on from there all right so doing 50 at both ends keeps your cover in place and that's exactly what we're doing now 50 at this end and then 50 on this end all right so this keeps your cover and then on the other end the same thing happens the same thing happens all right you keep 50 on this side oh that's way too much all right you do 50 on this side and then why is this like this pardon me 50 on this side and then you do 50 on this side i'm trying as much as possible to make my line very straight all right so this represents the two reinforcement however we need to call it out for proper identification all right oh and that's why you find um something like this that i have already added. so you can just place it to indicate that this particular reinforcement spans from the left and observing the cover here and then to the right observing the cover also over there so how do i determine the number of reinforcement that is there measuring all the base is one two one two in in length so with this you can come here do 1.2 then you subtract the cover to the right 50 cover to the left 50 and then that's 1.1 meters then you can now divide by the required spacing once you do that you have 4.4 then by the time you have the one extra you have five reinforcement so that's how we got about 5y1601 at 250 spacing or what about the other side um the other side of the base so we're going to have something like this so we have to shift this so, all right I just want to be quick in showing you um, so that I don't keep you since I have the details already. So we have this, it moves from here and then signifying this particular reinforcement. Now to identify a difference in the reinforcement and other lines, we may want to put a little property that will make it look so. So this and this. So already this shows to us the information we need 
now what we need to do next is to show this information in section so whoever it is who is working with our, our drawings on site would have clearer view of our instruction and then interpret it perfectly okay so we want to identify what point we we want the section to to be what's what point are we drawing the the section from so we're picking this particular section so whatever base type it is that um, applies to you please you put that on your own project and then the number of types you know of that particular type you put it there okay so put, to put a section now straightforward what we have here exactly is the section so what i will just do is i'll explain to you since it's still the same thing we're working with how i this came to be in all right i'll just explain to you what we did to have that all right so because it's a section and it's supposed to show in detail what is on the plan all right so i, I just want to do something i just a little moment so i'm going to take off everything you're seeing here and um, do it so you can see and understand okay all right so what you see now is an elevation drawing for the column starter all right or the column base and the starter all right so they call this usually a short column so we would have we would not have to put the reinforcement into all of those things accordingly so the first thing we want to note is that there are two reinforcements spanning um both ways and then at 250 spacing so we have them to be the same bar marks because they have the same shape the same um type all right and the same size okay so we want to have y16 reinforcement keeping the cover of 50 below to the right and then also to the left okay So we have that and another thing we have is the other one spanning in the other direction which is this particular one what we have there in section is this as o1 then the other one spans the other direction which is this so we're going to have that and that's exactly what we're seeing as a sh as in this shape this circle signifying that in section all right, so what we we'll have now is going to be this. And do not forget that there are five of them as we have seen and calculated. So we we'll have 250 spacing, 500 spacing, 750 spacing, and then, okay. So we see that it's completely five. All right, figures don't lie. Okay, and that's Bamak one also then we have the starter reinforcement now the starter reinforcement is going to be usually um the same as that which should be in the column that this base is supporting okay so once you are done with your design you want to look into what reinforcement actually is in the column that is to be supported by this particular column base and you need to be wise enough to use that particular reinforcement in detail okay so and that's why we have this y16 o2 so we just have to come here and do the same maintaining all of our covers as seen so you see now, that now and now maintaining all of our covers and then our links now this these are the links all right the same way we calculated the the number of reinforcement from here down to this place 950 minus the cover on the um, below and above which is 50 50 that's 100 then you divide by the required spacing which is 175 plus one you have six all right 
okay so and the next one is that i want to show to you is after the the oversight concrete is expected that you have a, a portion a little portion of the concrete um in the shape of the column which is called the kicker 75 mm kicker and from the face of that kicker up above you're supposed to have um a, a lap and that lap is usually um 50d to allow for the transfer of stresses from the upcoming um reinforcement down below into the next reinforcement okay so and that's why you're finding 800 here it means that after they are done put placing this there must be at least a minimum of 800 mm length above the kicker so that's exactly what it is so if you look at what we have here now as we have rightly shown you will discover that we have ha we have just done the detailing for the plan and then this is the section there is nothing really um hard or nothing really serious about this and you should get it as simple as it is so if you have any questions query any um whatever it is that you want to ask me please do well to use the uh, comment section i'll be there to answer to everything that you have if you're new to my channel and you have not paraventure subscribed on this channel please do that use the subscribe button like this video and share with your colleagues that you get better on structural engineering see you in the next video i'm joshua the designer bye